the Z Modeler brush selected, hover over an edge and press spacebar to open up the Z Modeler Edge Action menu. Locate the Close Action. With the Close Action selected, you'll have two targets, Concave Hole and Convex Hole. To start off, just select the Concave Hole target. With this target selected, return to your model and then hover over an edge near a hole on your actual model. So you can see here I have this hole and I'm just hovering over an edge. While hovering over this edge, just simply click and this will perform the actual concave hole action. With this action applied, you'll see that it has filled the actual hole of the model with actual geometry. Now with this target selected, this is a very similar process to if you came over to the geometry tab here, went to modify topology and clicked the actual close hole button here. Now returning back to my model, just undoing that, and now hovering over one of these edges again and pressing spacebar to go back into the edge action menu. Now select the target of convex hole. Now with the convex hole target selected, you'll have a whole bunch of modifiers down here in which you can modify how the actual close action will be applied to this target. To start off, let's just use the default settings. Now with those settings selected, if I click on that edge again, it's going to close that actual hole again, but this time it's going to generate polys around a center point. Now if I undo this and I click on that edge and now clicking and dragging, if I drag horizontally, I'm going to get an increased elevation on the actual polygons that were created. And if I drag in a vertical fashion, I'm going to get increased topology. So using this horizontal and vertical motion, you can come through and add this different kind of shape to that actual functionality that's closing that hole on your model. Now I'm just going to undo that process. Now hover over an edge again and press spacebar to go back into the Z Modeler Edge action menu. And now we're going to change some of these modifiers down here. So this first set of modifiers here will determine what kind of curves are going to be used when generating the new topology. So by default, this was set to spline. So if I come over here and change this to something like straight lines, and now go back to my model and simply click and drag, I'm going to get a shape like so. So it's going to keep those straight lines and give me this kind of cylinder type shape. If I undo that and now hover over that edge again, and now change this to say something like small round corners. Now when I actually click and drag out, you're going to notice I'm going to get these nice kind of small round corners at the very end of that actual shape. So using these modifiers here is going to determine the actual curvature that will be used when generating the new topology. Now the next thing we'll look at are these modifiers down here. So these first ones, the actual converge options here, are going to determine where the actual midpoint of this new topology is going to converge to. So converging to center is going to give you that nice center point. But if I say select something like converge to edge, and I go back to my model, and now if I hover over an edge now and simply click and drag, you'll notice that that midpoint is now going to be positioned right in the center of the selected edge. So now if I hold and drag out, you'll end up getting a shape like this. So now if I undo that and go back into the edge menu here and now change this to say converge to point, it's going to look at the edge you have selected and then try to determine the closest point to where your cursor is and then converge that point to that actual area. So you can see it's putting that center point directly on that point right there and now when I move out like so you're getting a shape like this. Now going back into the menu you have some other options down here so you have interactive curvature or optimal curvature or you can actually set a specific curvature and this will determine the precise curvature in which any of these values here determines appropriate. Next you have interactive resolution which will determine how much resolution or how many spans are generated on the new topology and then you have these options of twisting down here. Now these twist options are really interesting so if I come and just say select the 360 degree twist modifier here and now come back to my hole and click and drag out it's going to actually twist that geometry it creates. So this is really nice for generating threaded type elements like screws or things like that that you may want to put on your actual model. And you can also determine a specific value for the twist over here. So if you don't just want it to be 360, you can come over to the slider here and change the actual resolution of this twist here. And then when you come back to your model and click and drag, it's now going to apply that value for that actual twist. And then finally at the bottom here, you have 
different modifiers to control how the actual polygroups will be established on this new topology. So by default, it's set to columns, so you can change this to rows or flat. So with flat selected, if you just simply click and drag, you'll see I'm only getting one polygroup established on that new topology. So using this close hole action, along with other actions such as poly delete, you can come through and start making holes on your actual models and then come back in and using the close hole functionality to generate interesting shapes and designs on the surfaces of your model.